My name is Danny Ortega, and I work for the Ortega Law Firm. I've been a lawyer in this town for over 40 years. I practice primarily in the area of personal injury. You know, you've heard the commercials over to me by the lawyers who tell you that they do auto accident work. Well, I do a lot of work involving auto accidents, as well as medical malpractice. If you feel that a doctor, a hospital, or a medical provider has somehow not given you the proper medical treatment and that has injured you, or if you lost a loved one as a result of a malpractice, we do that work too. We also do cases like dog bites, slip and falls, things of that nature where you've been injured because of the negligence of another that is the kind of work that we do. Hello and welcome. I'm Jesus Hernandez. This is Arizona Barrio Stories, where we celebrate our history, celebrate our culture and traditions. But more important, we also recognize those who achieved quite a bit in their lives. And today we have an, an exclusive interview with one of the uh, big time achievers, and his name is Joey Lopez. Joe, gracias for uh, taking the time to visit with us and, and share, with you the, uh, share with us the story. Well, it's good to be with you, uh, Jesus, and I'm, I'm glad I'm still around uh, to be able to do it. Let's, let's begin by telling me uh, where you were born, because we want to go back into our barrios and stuff. Uh, it was in, in New Mexico, right? I was born in a little town by the name of Duran, uh, Nuevo Mexico. Duran, by the way, is named after one of my great-great-grandfathers. Oh, wow. He settled that, uh, that area. And uh, that is where uh, we, I was born. And until I was six years old, we lived in that little town. Let me ask you, is, 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 is um, Dolores Huerta also from there? That's what I understand. I no, I, I don't think that she is from no. Duran. I Not don't. Duran? She, I think she's from New Mexico. And, and how is the town now? Is it uh, the at that particular time Duran was a hub for Southern Pacific Railroad. Oh, okay. And so it was quite a busy little town. When uh, Southern Pacific moved out, uh, most of the employment uh, in Duran uh, went away, and it forced my grandfather, who I was living with to join the migrant stream. And so when I was six years old, uh, we started a migrant stream, first going to Colorado, mm -hmm. uh, coming back to New Mexico, uh, going into Texas, and working uh, in Portales, uh, Clovis, New Mexico, and the peanuts and what have you. How many years other crops. did you do that? We did that for approximately 10 years. 10 years. From Texas, we moved into California. We made a few trips into Oregon and Washington, uh, picking the fruit primarily. But in 1949, we settled in Arizona because we had a, an uncle that was a general foreman of a big ranch. Mm -hmm. So while we gave up, uh, being migrants, we didn't give up being farm workers. Farm workers. Uh, we still worked at Arrowhead Ranches, oh. now a big uh, residential community. Yes, but at yes. that time, they had uh, all kinds of uh, products, uh, crops that were raised there. And I worked there until 1957 when I graduated from uh, from school. And you decided to go, they what forced you to get into school? I mean, your parents simply says, es tiempo que tienes que ir a la escuela? We had some, uh, I had some fairly decent teachers at uh, Peoria High School that encouraged me to continue with a college education. Quite frankly, I had not expected that I would be going to college. Uh, we uh, were still very poor uh, and uh, paying for uh, schooling at a university was a little beyond our reach. Expensive, yeah. But uh, through the family, they were able to pay, uh, help me pay 
our way and that is how I went. Actually, uh, uh, while I was in high school and, and did not anticipate going to college, it was a deep desire of me, myself, to go to college. And, and you got a come degree out. in what? I did not get a degree. I, uh, because of the organization that we started later on, mm -hmm. I was a, unable to uh, to finish. But you got the understanding of what the value of education. That is correct. Was. I went three and a half years to the university and never did uh, never did graduate. So when you were in school and then you, uh, uh, I guess, moved out of school and you began socializing and becoming a professional, what what? What triggered your desire to to begin to organize uh, community groups or become part of the community? Well, let me let me uh, say that uh, in between and during my college years, I met uh, my wife Rosie and fell in love with her, and I uh, did not uh, have any intentions other than to get married to her, and so I needed a job. And uh, I f was able to join the a union, and uh, so was, was it the, what, what kind of union? It was the pipe fitters, uh, plumbers, pipe fitters, and steam fitters uh, union. Uh, Did that provide you a, a kind of a base for organization of, of groups? Well, it did. Uh, being in a union and attending meetings and what have you, and being involved in labor. It's pretty much like organizing uh, anything else that you uh, that you want to do, and so it gave me uh, that background. But more important, uh, at that particular time, unions were very helpful in that they paid a lot more money and allowed me to provide uh, for our family a lot better and uh, allowed me to be thinking of other other kinds of things. Because Arizona is a work, right to work state, That is right? correct. So that is unions correct. have to, have to uh, struggle to stay alive and, and, and grow. That is correct. So, so, so the organizational part of it helped you in terms of uh, uh, your political ambitions and your growth? Because I know you were, uh, what, the first Latino uh, member of the Board of Supervisors? I, I was, but that was, didn't happen until 1972, and by that time we had uh, quite a bit of experience in dealing uh, in the community. Uh, so that was after we, uh, these organizations were created, like uh, the Barra Youth Project. That is correct. Right. That Tell is me about correct. the Barra Youth Project and what did you co founded that, and what was the purpose of creating an organization like that? Because you're you're like co-founder of like five, seven organizations that are now grown. The Vary Youth Project was an organization and the principal uh, person in starting that organization was a very good friend, Alfredo Gutierrez. Yes. He uh, dealt very well with youth at that time. And youth were having uh, quite a bit of problem in our community at that time. The youth was into uh, sniffing glue and what have you. We had attempted uh, through uh, Chicanos por la Causa to address that issue, but they weren't paying too much attention. He came up with the idea of starting an organization run by youth that would address issues dealing with youth. Uh, we had problems in the schools. Uh, there was a lot of fighting going on. Mm -hmm. And we thought that if the youth were talking to other youth, that we might have more success in dealing with these issues. And so we started uh, Chica uh, the Barrio Youth, youth Project, Project right? primarily uh, funded through Chicanos por la Causa assisting them in their endeavors and uh, primarily because the attorney for uh, that helped us start to incorporate uh, Vario Youth Project said that kids uh, were not emancipated yet 
they weren't 18 and so they were not legally responsible for their actions. And so Chicanos por la Causa acted as a fiscal uh, organization for Barrio Youth Project. Fiscal agent. But primarily, mm -hmm. uh, the youth did address the issues that uh, youth were dealing with. They were serious because I grew up in that er in that era and uh, I remember those days. But uh, let's backtrack a little bit. How did uh, how did Chicanos por la Causa kind of evolve into what it is today? Because you were one of the original uh, persons who had this concept of an organization that would do what it is doing now. Or, it, or you, <clears throat> you mentioned that you wanted to uh, uh, stir up some 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 issues. Well, what 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 ha happened actually was that I had a friend that was going to Arizona State University. Mm -hmm. um, at that particular time, 1968, as I recall, two students from California came to Arizona State University. Uh, they were meeting uh, with an organization pretty prominent at that time of Latinos at the university and um, asked to ask us to host these two students and their aim was to start organizations, student organizations in all the major universities throughout the Southwest. They felt that you had to have uh, that kind of expertise that they were gaining at universities to address issues. And attract students. Right, that were affecting uh, our, our community and the students. The organization started at Arizona State University and my friend uh, Sunny Nahera, who was one of the co-founders mm -hmm. of MASO, uh, was no longer elected as one of the leaders. And so he felt that we needed to do something, which uh, I was happy to engage with him mm -hmm. in starting a community-based organization. I felt that if they were going to be able to address issues of the Latino community, of the Chicano community that the organization had to be based in the community. And so uh, that started approximately one year of organizing efforts. Uh, uh, we started going to different organizations, talking about the need to form a community-based organization that was going to be somewhat different from the traditional organizations that were, were around at that, that time. Saw? What were the needs that you saw? Well, the needs were, were pretty obvious. Uh, our kids were dropping out of high school by about 60%. 60% of the kids that started in elementary school never completed uh, high school. Yeah, tragic, yeah. And so education became our primary issue. But, uh, but uh, you can go down all the social issues and there are issues that were not being addressed by the powers to be. At that particular time, the only, the only health institution that serves South Phoenix, which goes all the way to South Mountain, was a hospital that is situating, just situated just uh, right in the city limits of I'm attorney Richard Castillo. I have been an Arizona trial attorney for over 25 years. If you or your loved one was seriously injured or a death resulted from an automobile, motorcycle or trucking accident, a pedestrian accident, even from a dog bite, call me at 602-253-6223. 
You may have the grounds for a personal injury or wrongful death claim if it was caused by another person's negligence, recklessness, or misconduct. Call 602-253-6223. También hablamos español. Castillo 602-253-6223. There was a lot of redlining in our right, right, uh, right. in our community, so that people, even if they wanted to start businesses, were not allowed to get loans because of the redlining done by uh, by banks. So the service by the government, uh, city, state, and uh, county. Uh, were practically non-existent in South Phoenix. You were on the Board of Education for the Phoenix Union High School District. That is and correct. I guess that helped you address some of those issues in it, terms of the, uh, the recruitment of students into high schools? It, it did. Uh, how, did, how, did, how, did, how did, what was the issue that you saw? The one of the one of the responsibilities uh, that a board member has is to get and hire a superintendent that is going to address the needs mm -hmm. of our community. And so uh, starting with that, identifying a person that recognized and wanted to deal with the issues of high dropout rates and those kinds of things was uh, essential to repairing the educational system. Uh, I was lucky in that uh, we did hire a very good superintendent, but beyond that, we were able to hire people that were going to be principals of high schools. We were able to identify and hire and start programs that were going to address some of the failures of our schools. Phoenix Union is a district with 10 high schools, and you could count in one hand the number of counselors that we had. Counselors are very important to our students because they are supposed to advise uh, students as to what courses of study to take, getting them ready uh, mentally to go to universities and what have you, at least talk about it. And that wasn't happening. Uh, most people expected that our students were going to drop out and if they didn't drop out, they weren't going to be successful uh, anyway. So we needed to have that whole change of attitude and uh, I believe we accomplished that to, to a large degree. Things that, that let, me, let me say that there's a lot of work to be done in that area. Uh, we have not uh, completely, uh, we're not completely there, but we did uh, improve it quite uh, extensively. Well, it, it shows by the numbers of Latinos who are now in, in, in high schools and moving forward. Castillo, 602 I'm attorney Richard Castillo. I have been an Arizona trial attorney for over 25 years. If you or your loved one was seriously injured or a death resulted from an automobile, motorcycle or trucking accident, a pedestrian accident, even from a dog bite, call me at 602-253-6223. You may have the grounds for a personal injury or wrongful death claim if it was caused by another person's negligence, recklessness or misconduct. Call 602-253-6223. También hablamos español. Castillo 602-253-6223. Before we kind of end here, uh, uh, Joetti, politically you were involved in, in, in many aspects like the Board of Supervisors and the state legislature. Is there anything that stands out uh, among your many accomplishments when it comes to the political arena? Um, 
Anything that stands out for you that you felt that you contribute in that area? Jesus, when we first started Chicanos por la Causa, one of the things that we did to bring attention to the problems that we were having is to, uh, if you recall, we had a big boycott of Phoenix Union. We boycotted several businesses as well. Those are extensive uh, issues. Uh, it takes a lot of time to organize a boycott uh, and it's physically difficult to to do so. So Chavez is an example though. That, that is correct. Early on we determined that it would be a lot easier if we had Latinos in positions that allow us to be part of the decision making. Mm. And so we decided to get involved in politics. Uh, our first effort was with the Board of Supervisors. Right. And we had in South Phoenix a seat that was potentially good for a Latino uh, candidate. And so we ran Alfredo Gutierrez for the Senate and I ran for the to be a member of the Board of Supervisors and we both uh, won. So hitting it from two directions. That is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, but more important, the process of getting two persons elected uh, gave birth, I think, to a community being politicized and being educated in the importance of voting, of having our own representatives in all aspects of political life. Uh, we had very, very few board members in school boards. We had one member that had been a member of the city council. In the city and the state uh, senate, we had one uh, representative and the house, we probably had two that had served. Uh, and we wanted to have more people uh, in that area. And so we were successful in getting people registered and getting people interested in running for the different political offices. So it helped you to create the political muscle to be able to force issues and, 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 and improve on causes. How is your view of what we see today at the state legislature since you were there for so many years? Do you see a difference or you see a, a need in terms of the, um, the energies of those who are there now? The state is still very Republican or very conservative. But we have a sufficient number of people elected to both the House and the Senate that they are able to talk about the issues that affect us. Oftentimes they are successful in starting uh, and getting legislation passed so that before that uh, we had these representatives elected, the issues of Latinos were never discussed in, in, in public. Now uh, we have leaders that talk about uh, any problems that we're facing. We have a lot of expertise in the different areas. And so, uh, yeah, we... Uh, Are you satisfied a, of the accomplishments of our Latino community and those that came from the barrio? Well, we should never be uh, completely satisfied. Uh, there's always room for uh, improvement and... Uh, we uh, will continue, I'm, I'm sure now that the younger leaders will continue to stress political activity and the reasons for having uh, decision makers in, uh, in our position. different political positions. As we close, Joetti, is there a message that you would like to uh, tell people you know, words of encouragement that you might have during this time with your wisdom at 80 some years old and what you've done and accomplished in life. Is there a message that you would like to tell these newcomers? 
we have a different issue today, Jesus, and I'm glad you gave me a chance to, to talk about it. I spent 50 years uh, talking and trying to get uh, Latinos in a better position. Today we have a different kind of a problem. In 2016, we elected a person that threatens to destroy the democracy that we have in this country. Mm -hmm. If I had some advice to give, it would be that we need, as activists, not to address simply the issues that confront Latinos, or if you're a black leader, address black problems or Native American problems. But this problem affects everybody. Democracy. That is correct. We need to have a, a nation that obeys the rule of law, one that counts and sees it's necessary one vote, one person, one vote. And problems take a long time to be resolved. But in a, de and in a democracy, it takes a long time. But at least there is hope of addressing your issues. If we do not, it doesn't matter how much interest you have in fixing any kind of problem, we're not going to be able to do it. As you close, say hello to your family. I do. I want to uh, say hi to my wife, uh, my uh, daughter and my granddaughter. Uh, they're probably uh, waiting for me you know, right now. Judy, I want to thank you for taking the time for sharing your story and your wisdom. Your, uh, your record of success is uh, uh, unsurpassed by many people. Well, thank and, you very uh, We are better because of what you've done in our community. So, gracias a ti y hablamos después. Seguro que sí. Yo soy Jesús Hernández. I'm Jesús Hernández. This is uh, Arizona Barrio Stories. Until next time, be safe.